How Cyclone Formed Cyclone refers to any spinning storm that rotates around a low-pressure center. The low-pressure center is also referred to as the eye of the storm, which is well known for being eerily calm compared with the areas under the spinning arms of the storm. Even though they form over different areas, cyclones tend to come about in the same way and revolve around that low-pressure eye. Warm air likes to rise, and as it rises, it cools. Cool air can't hold as much moisture as warm air, so that water gets squeezed out of the condensing air and a cloud begins to form. If the warm air rises very quickly, this creates an updraft. Likewise, if the water in the cloud builds up enough, it may fall back to the ground as rain and draw cool air down with it as a downdraft. When they work together, that warm updraft and cool downdraft create a storm cell. As this process continues, the cloud grows and we eventually get a large thunderstorm cloud. This thunderstorm cloud is now ready to diversify into other storms like tropical cyclones and tornadoes. But this can happen unless the air in the cloud starts spinning horizontally. If this occurs over the tropical ocean, this is called a tropical depression. This is like a baby tropical cyclone, with wind speeds less than 39 miles per hour. If it starts spinning even faster and has wind speeds between 40 to 73 miles per hour, we have a tropical storm. If the storm grows even larger over the tropical ocean and has wind speeds above 74 miles per hour, we have our full-grown hurricane, typhoon or cyclone, depending on where that storm is found. Types of Cyclones the term cyclone actually refers to several different types of storms. They occur in different places, and some occur over land while others occur over water. What they all have in common is that they are spinning storms rotating around that low pressure center. Tropical cyclones are what most people are familiar with because these are cyclones that occur over tropical ocean regions. Hurricanes and typhoons are actually types of tropical cyclones, but they have different names so that it's clear where that storm is occurring. Hurricanes are found in the Atlantic and Northeast Pacific, typhoons are found in the Northwest Pacific. If you hear tropical cyclone, you should assume that it's occurring in the South Pacific or Indian Ocean, but for this lesson, We'll use it refer to all types of tropical ocean cyclones. We can also further describe tropical cyclones based on their wind speeds. They are called category 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5, increasing with intensity and wind speed as the number increases. A category 1 cyclone is the weakest with wind speeds of 74 to 95 miles per hour a category 5 cyclone on the other hand is extremely dangerous and has the potential for major damage category 5 cyclones have wind speeds of 155 miles per hour and above polar cyclones are cyclones that occur in polar regions like greenland siberia and antarctica unlike tropical cyclones Polar cyclones are usually stronger in winter months. As you can see, these storms really do prefer the colder weather. They also occur in areas that aren't very populated, so any damage they do is usually pretty minimal. A mesocyclone is when part of a thunderstorm cloud starts to spin, which may eventually lead to a tornado. Meso means middle so you can think of this as the midpoint between one type of storm and the other. Tornadoes all come from thunderstorm clouds, but not all thunderstorm clouds make tornadoes. In order for a tornado to occur, part of that cloud has to spin, and though you can't really see this happening, this is the intermediate, or meso step from regular cloud to dangerous spinning cloud running along the ground. Potentially. The most dangerous hazard associated with tropical cyclones which make landfall in storm surge. The phenomenon has been responsible for more deaths than any other feature of cyclones. 
Storm surge is a raised dome of water about 60 to 80 kilometers across and typically about 2 to 5 meters higher than the normal tide level. It is caused by a combination of strong winds driving water onshore and the lower atmospheric pressure in a tropical cyclone. In the southern hemisphere the onshore winds occur to the left of the tropical cyclone's path. In Australia, this is the east side on the northwest and north coasts and the south side on the east coast. To understand further, there are four stages that form a cyclone which include Formative stage A mature cyclone Mature cyclone Decay stage The precautionary warning of cyclones is usually made during the formative stages. Then, if necessary, an evacuation will take place during the immature stages. The most dangerous stage is the mature progress, where the cyclone reaches the peak limit of its strength cause the most damage. Finally, the cyclone will ease into the decay stage and dissipate. Cyclones are measured by a category classification, as illustrated in Table 2.3. Additionally, the cyclone category can vary from different cyclone stages. Category 1 would be of minimal damage with wind gusts up to 125 km per hour and Category 5 would be of destructive and maximal damage with wind gusts exceeding 280 km per hour. Table 2.3 also describes the characteristics and effects of each category with two estimations of the damages it may cause. This estimation is especially important for an accurate prediction and appropriate precautions to be taken. This means that current technologies needs to be managed, maintained and utilized in order to protect the exposed population. In order to achieve such an outcome, characteristics of a TC have to be understood including Sustained wind speeds of more than 120 km per hour surrounding the center Very low atmospheric pressure system Increased sea level, storm surge and wave heights I diameters are 40 km on average I wall marks the strongest wind and heaviest rainfall. Spiral rain band clouds that extend over 1000 km from the eye. Tropical cyclones form only over warm ocean waters near the equator. To form a cyclone, warm, moist air over the ocean rises upward from near the surface. As this air moves up and away from the ocean surface, it leaves as less air near the surface. 